if my volume is coming out low, try and increase your volume because my mic volume is absolutely high. I'm guessing um, that there would be an issue at your end. So kindly try and fix that. Um, if you still can't hear me, I don't know what, what I can do, but this is the best we can do right now. Okay, so let us start with the session. We have Sorab members and Kadria members. I'm going to show you how to log in to Exposure. And this is for Kadria members. Kadria members have to type Kadria, K-A-D-R-E-A dot Exposure app. Please make a note that this exposure starts with an X and not an E. So I've had many people complain that, okay, you know what, they can't get onto, uh, they can't get onto the platform using this URL. And that's because they've been using, they've been putting an E before the X in this case. So it starts with an X, P-O-S-U-R-E-A-P-P.com. So for Kadria members, it's kadria.exposureapp.com. For Sorep members, it's going to be sorep.exposureapp.com. And respectively, there are other members of joining us from other boards as well. So for now, I'm going to get into kadria.exposureapp.com. When I click on that, it's going to take us to this particular page, which is the NAF login rear to link page. Here you have to put your respective board and your login credentials. Um, these login credentials, everybody has them. You, you use this to log into different platforms. So uh, I'm guessing it shouldn't be an issue at this stage. I'm, I'm going to be using our technology director, Murray Brown's account because he's a realtor and his realtor link account is tagged as a realtor account and mine is not, I'm just a staff. So there are certain functions which won't be available to me because of that. I'm using Murray's account. So please make a note of that. So click on sign in and you should be directly taken into exposure. Now this is the easiest way to sign in. Use your NAF login use your realtor link login and use the URL that I mentioned before. Now, once you get onto the system, the first thing you'll notice is that you will be in the search tab itself. You can also go home. This is your dashboard. Uh, we will be having a separate session on how to manage this dashboard. What are the best use cases, how you can um, enhance your output using the best dashboard layouts. So that's for another session, but that's your home. The second tab is the search tab. We are going to be looking into the search tab today. Um, to begin with, we have two ways in which we can perform a normal search. One is the map search mode and the other search is the criteria search mode. Now you'll notice that for residential, it's, there is a map search mode as well as the criteria search mode. And it's there for commercial as well. You can search by MLS number. In this case, there's obviously no map search or criteria search. Just enter your MLS number, separate them by commas, and you will be able to search for the, the listings that you're looking for. You can also search by realtor. You will have to give, you, you know, type their name out. Right now, we do not have an instance where we have all the realtors here, but soon there will be because we're trying to make sure that all these profiles are available in real time. So you can search for a realtor's name, but just in case you don't find any realtor over here, that is not because there's, there's some problem with that realtor. It's just that the system is not behaving in that manner right now. So if you want to search for anyone, you can search for them, but if it's, they're not displaying on the list, don't worry about it. They will soon be up. Also, you can search for listings by office. I, I think everybody knows what this is. If you want to search for a listing by office, you can do that. You can view details. You can view active listings. You can find out about the agents that are connected to a particular office. You can also search by open house. Uh, this is, this works just like hot sheets. So you can just select whatever date you have in mind for, for your open house and see if there's any open house in your vicinity on that particular day. So yeah, just six criteria here, select the criteria that you want and it will give you results as per the open houses that are scheduled in say this week. Let's put a date range here, 11th to 19th. So we found four open houses here. Um, it's a good way to just make sure that you are on top of your market all the time. So that's for open house. You can also search by tax information. Again, this is very self-explanatory. 
enter your PID, enter the PID number, and you will get information regarding that listing. You can enter lot size, the block, the, the sale date, and you can also search for listings by assessment value. So you can search for listings. The search tab basically gives you uh, the opportunity to do your research, to search for listings based whether they are residential or commercial listings uh, it gives you six different options in which you can search for listings open houses offices realtors just by MLS number residential or commercial so let's just I, I mentioned earlier that searching for listings under residential or commercial you're gonna be have having two options one is the map search mode and the other one is the criteria search mode now if you go by criteria it's just it's a huge list, you know, uh, there are 48 different criteria basis, which you can search for listings, um, depending on what the requirement you have. At first, I will show you how to perform the map search. Now, it is important that you understand how the map works. How do these options on the right hand side that you see on the extreme right hand side, there are certain selection options that you have. How do these guys work as well? We'll be, we'll be seeing right now. Uh, at first, we will have the move map option selected. So you, you can click on the map and you can move the map around. That's what the hand is for. You can also just with two fingers, if you're using a laptop, make sure on your, on your uh, what do I call it? On your mouse pad, you use two fingers to zoom in click once and drag. This is the best way you can manage this map. Now, once I zoom into the map and I realize that, okay, this is my concern area. I'm looking for listings somewhere in downtown, south of Kamloops. What am I going to do? I can draw a, a rectangle, which looks like a square over here, but it's basically a quadrilateral and, or a circle or a polygon. Let's do a polygon. So I've selected a polygon here. And if I want to look for listings in this particular area, what I'm, what am I going to do is I'm going to click once and drag, click again and drag, click again, then drag and finish my quadri, my polygon. So here it, the map is showing me that there are these many listings here with that price. And so basically we have 42 active listings in this area if we go by map search. Now, uh, map search can be useful for people who are not concerned with the exact criteria that they're looking for, but they're more interested in the location. So this can come in handy for people who are wanting to search for listings that way. The other way to search for listings is, first of all, we're gonna disable the map search. And it goes back to one, two, two, six active listings, which is active listings in the Kamloops area right now. So you will see that there are a few options. One says load search, load list, actions, clear all, and search. At first, let's just only look at the different criteria. We will come to the load search option and the load list option as well. How do you perform a search? Now, the first thing that you will see is area. Then there's sub area, there's property type, listing status, 48 different criteria. Now there's a chance that you may not like the fact that there is area at the very beginning. You may want the property type to be the first criteria. Now this is because you're going to be searching for listings. You're going to be using your MLS in the long run. It really depends on you. How do you want to use this platform? So the platform gives you the opportunity to decide that as well. You can go into the actions tab and you can, click on add, remove, or reorder search boxes. What are you going to essentially do in this case is you can move, say, you can click on this little guy over here, click and drag it to the top and click apply. You will see that now we have property type at first and then area. Now, just because this is Murray's profile, I don't want to make these changes. So anyway, these changes are not going to be saved because in order to save this thing, you will have to click on save current search box layout. If you click on save current search box layout, it's going to stay as property type first, then the area and then the sub area. 
Otherwise, it is going to only last for this session. Let's just go back to add or remove or reorder search boxes. Let's put property type back after sub area. And this is the layout in which, this is the way Murray likes it. So property type is third and the first is area. So I just showed you how you can reorder your criteria or search boxes by using add or remove or reorder search boxes and then saving the current search box layout. What you will also notice that once you click on save current search box layout, you create a new one. And when you, when you save this thing, when you save this thing, you can load it later by clicking on load or manage search box layouts. And if I click on this guy here, I can load my layout back again. So you can have different ways of layouts that you like. You may, in some cases, you may want area to be the third option, the property type to be the first option. You may want the current price to be the first option and not the area as well. So it really depends on realtor to realtor, what they like and what is the best layout that works for them. So that can be done using these three options. I repeat, first you will have to reorder, then you'll have to save. And once you save it, you can load it again at the time you like. So these three options under the actions tab, they are to do with the criteria that we see over here. Once again, we have 48 different criteria. So we don't really know who likes what, which criteria to be at the top. So that's why the system was created in such a way that people have the freedom and, the, and they can choose which criteria they see first. So coming back to the search mode, that was how you can rearrange the different search boxes, the, the different criteria boxes that we have. Now let's just perform a, a search and uh, I'm just going to take, do a random search here. So for me, Kamloops, Aberdeen, single family dwelling, and let's go for sold listings. Now you will see that once I click on sold, active is still highlighted. So this particular list is going to give me 23 active listings and 2,974 listings as sold. Now, one thing very important that you must notice here is that the system is not going to generate any list. Like if I click on search right now, it is not going to do anything because there are more than 500 listings found. Now the system works in real time. You will have to ensure that the number of listings you see over here at this stage is lower than 500. So let's try and do that. I have Kamloops, I have single family dwelling. Let's just remove active. Let me, sorry, let me just do this again. Oops. Okay. Single family dwelling. Now, if I click on active again, it's going to deselect it. So in order to deselect anything that is selected already, make sure that you just click on it again. Right now, we're only looking at sole listings in Aberdeen. Uh, we may want to put this current price criteria to be say, okay, 550 looks good. That brings down the sole listings to 335. So now we can actually perform the search. We can go ahead with the search because the number of listings that are going to show at this point are lesser than 500. So we are good to go ahead, but let's just refine it even further. So I'm looking for four bedrooms in total. That's it's come down to 302 bots. Let's put three. Oh, sorry. It's just one. Okay. Let's just put something more here. So we're down to 154. Now, one thing you will notice here is you will see all the different criteria that we had selected underneath over here are now being populated as bubbles at the top. So this allows you the opportunity to actually refine your search or like change your search depending on the way you want it. So I may want to take off like, you know, um, minimum $550,000 price tag at this point and see how many listings do I get. Um, I may want to change any particular uh, criteria the way I like with the use of these um, search bubbles at the top. So 
this is how you know what search criteria you've selected, how you can deselect or select it, and how you want to change it. At, at, at this point, you may, you may want to save this particular search for a later time. Maybe because you come onto the platform and you perform a specific search all the time. And um, this, is, this can be a chance with people who are working in specific areas and specific sectors. They may want, not want to look at Southeast or Southwest. They, they just are interested in the Northeast area. So you may want to select these criteria at first and then save the search. Now, once you save the search, the search criteria is what gets saved, not the list. Because the listings, um, the MLS system, it gets updated every second, every minute. So there might be listings that come up for a specific search criteria there. There might be listings that go out of that search criteria. So the, listing, the listings can change. The list that gets generated with the help of specific criteria, that list can change. But this criteria that you have selected right now, you can save that criteria using the save search option. When I click on that, it's going to give me an option to either modify the previous saved searches that I have, or I can create a new search. So let's just call it test test search Feb 12th. When I click on it, now the system is going to tell me that I am in my test search for Feb, for Feb 12th. If I just took away any criteria right now. Okay, it's still keeping me like that. But I can just refresh this and go to say this search. And then I can come back to the search that I had done before. So it gives you the option to just save a specific set of criteria and move around the system. If you want to go and go and check another search criteria, you can do that. Then you can come back to it. So if there are specific searches that you always look for, make sure you save them so that you don't have to go through the, through the pain of actually saving or actually selecting the search criteria again and again. Now that was about the search criteria that we have over here. And like I said, saving the search criteria is not going to save the listings that you see for that particular search criteria because the listings can change. Some listings can get sold. Some listing can expire conditional, unconditional lots can happen. So these things can be taken care of if you save your list. Now we will see how to save list and how to load list at a later stage. But right now let's just perform this search and see the total 154 sold listings that we have. So once you click on search after selecting that criteria, after saving it, after rearranging your um, criteria boxes, after you've done all of that part, now we come to the stage where we can actually see the listings. Now, one thing you will notice is these listings are going to be displayed in the format. By format, I mean the layout, the columns that have been defined, which are specific to a realtor. These columns can be moved around by just clicking on them and dragging. I'm gonna keep it here because I don't wanna play with Murray's table. He's, this is the way he likes it. So you can move your columns here by just clicking on it, holding and dragging. What you can also do is add or remove columns. Now this is the second last option under actions. You can add or remove columns. Like you can see, uh, there is uh, there are certain calculated columns. Calculated columns basically calculate um, these things. Let's see what ratio does. So that's going to it's like once you select ratio, once you add another column, it's going to come right at the end of this table. What you can do is say if I wanted price sold to lot to square feet ratio. So I bring, what I need to do is I bring square feet by in square feet over here, right next to price sold. And I bring ratio over here. Now what this is going to do is, it's going to calculate the ratio of the first column with respect to the second one. So this is how calculated columns work. You can, Again, add or remove columns. In this case, you can get rid of the ratio. 
you may want to get rid of showing time or auto prop you can do that as well but let's just keep these guys so this this option that you can see here there's just an, a complete list of different columns that you can have i'd request all our realtors to just go in and see which columns over here are valuable for you for your table and the way you like it when you perform a search which are the which are the values that you'd like to see so once you have that what you need to do is and if you if you like this column layout if you've moved around if you move these things around and if you like it this way and you want to save it you don't want to change it the next time go to actions again and click on save current column layout when you click on save current current column layout it is just going to save it and you can load it at any point the way you like it so murray has a lot of different layouts that he likes so he is you can choose between the loaded column layouts that you get so that was about column layouts you can also filter results um if say for example you wanted to see only done robin in this case so you just click done and you will only have done robin in this case done bar as well so if you want to filter your searches if you want to see if there's a particular listing that's come up if you remember the the name of the street you can just click on filter results start typing the name of the street and it's going to start filtering results from among the 154 listings that we got from the search that we performed now that is about filter results you can also search again using this option over here on the right hand side and you can also change the view that you have of of these listings this is the thumbnail view what you'll notice is that now there's this price sold feature over here all homes all properties that show in red are basically they basically signify that these properties have been sold this option over here is real estate history so if you click on that it is going to tell you all the information about the real estate of this particular property and you can also read more or view detail view detail is going to take you to that listing page you can also sort this the way you like it um depending on the criteria that you've selected the system allows you the option of say arranging it in ascending order now arrangement of these listings is really important and to check that we'll have to go back to the grid view because there's a chance that you might not want to sorry there's a chance that you might want to share these this list and you might not want this particular listing to show at the top you may want this listing to go at the top and for that what you need to do is click on actions and just a second please okay i don't know why this is not showing me that option because previously we had this option of rearrange search results where you could just click on this guy and rearrange the search results that you had right now okay maybe it's over here manually rearrange results so there you have it so now for example you wanted you wanted this particular listing to show on top what you need to do is click on edit click on manually search results rearrange search results and now you can click on it and drag it to the top so now you have this listing showing at the top um similarly i can click on this guy bring this one on the top so depending on which listings you want to show so because why you are creating this particular search um uh, table is because you maybe want to share these listings with a client maybe you want to sh share this information with with your peers with your colleagues in within your brokerage with your friends whatever but it is important that your client or whoever you're sending this to 
looks at a particular listing right at the top. That's the first listing that they see. Now, when I change this to thumbnail view, you will notice that it goes away. So this thing really works. This thing only works. The sequencing of listing really works only for the grid view. So let me just show that to you again. So I have this on the top. Let's bring this on the top as well. And if I share this, if I share this list, to share this list, you'll have to select all these guys because I wanna share this list. At once, there are only gonna be 100 selected. If I wanna select more, I will have to send them later. So I click on email gateway link. How do you do that? How do you get the other ones above 100? If they're above 100, then you, then you cannot send them at once. How do you separate it? Just, um, oh, you will have to separate it by clicking next over here and selecting these guys. So the question was, how do you select all listings at once? So you, you will have to click on previous, sorry, in this case, you'll have to click on next and then select by clicking on this checkbox and that should select all your listings. So in, in case you wanna send these, you can also send these at once. So right now we have done Robin on top and Canon Gate. Let's check if our list, the way we've arranged it, it shows, oh yeah. So the system is gonna tell you that you can only send 100 listings at a time. You cannot send more than 100 listings at a given point. So that's, that's another new thing that I got to know right now. So let's just deselect these guys because we, we can only send a hundred listings. So that's where we are, hundred listings. Click on actions and click email gateway link. So we can see that Dunrobin and Canon gate place, they are at the top. So this is what we changed. So please remember that if you're in the grid view, you can rearrange your search results by clicking on these guys, dragging it to the top. And if I wanna send this list, you will see that that listing has been now put on the top. So you can, so now the system behaves the way you like it, but this is only for the grid view. Please make sure once you come to this stage and if you want to email these listings to a particular client, when you click on two, the system is going to pre-populate this with the number of clients that you already have created using the client tab. Now discussing the client tab is for another day, but I request every realtor who I come across is and that is to create clients, as many clients as they can on exposure, because exposure allows you the opportunity of sending emails, sending email gateway links, sending feature sheets, and it's always better to have your clients created that way so that then you don't have to jump from platform to platform looking for their right email ID. You can simply click on two or just search for a client uh, and select that client or yeah, you can, you can also type in the exact email address and, and the system is going to send uh, the email, these listings to that particular email address. Even if you don't have a client created, the system is still going to send an email on the email address that you type in over here. Again, uh, it's been sent by Murray Brown. This email is going to be picked up from your accounts tab, which is where, where you store your account details. So from Murray Brown, you can change this as well. Send me a copy is basically trying, when you try to CC yourself, to keep a track of the exact listings that have been sent out. So you click on send me a copy. You can change your name, the subject, the message if you wanna send. You can also include signatures. Signatures and um, footers, all of these things uh, can be saved under the account tab. But you, if, you, if in case you wanna change that right over here, you can do that by clicking on edit signature message as well or edit your agent info. Um, I'm not sure, I'll have to check on that. So there was, there was a feedback and that was uh, the, the signature in certain email cases is shown at the top of the email, which obviously shouldn't be the case. So I'm not really sure, you guys will have to test it out yourself and let me know. And if that's still happening, we will try and have that fixed. 
So this is how you see the listing. This is how your client is going to get the email. And in the email, they are going to have this particular button. Now, in order to see the listing, this is just a textual representation of the listings that have been sent. If you want to see interactive listings, your client will have to click on this particular blue button. And now, even though you see it in the thumbnail view, you will see that the exact particular listing that I wanted to show at the top, it is still showing at the top, even under thumbnail view. Now, this is some thumbnail view, and we've seen this before, so I'm not going to get into the details, but you can also, your client or whoever has received this email can now view these, all these listings, all these hundred sold listings in thumbnails, in the map mode. They can also look at them as a table. Table with obviously not the option of adding more columns or not. It's just for the realtor who can do that. You can, they can also search for more listings, more similar listings, and also click on actions. They can print it or email the same to somebody else. So this particular button over here, click here to view interactive listings. This essentially gives your recipient the freedom to view listings, view more listings of that sort, share these listings, print them, view them on the map, view them on the table. So it is very powerful. It is indeed very powerful. Once they have, and also once they come here, they can also click on this listing and have their own landing page. Now, one very important thing that this system does is that it is going to show these listings, not in the profile of the listing agent. If you're searching for listings and if you search and you perform that search, you want to send those listing out listings out those listings are not going to show in the format of the listing agent. They're going to be in the format of the agent who searched for those listings and who is sending those listings to their client. Now this is because we have to work in the best interest of the realtor who is performing the search and who's wanting to send these listings for business purposes to, to their clients. So I'm just having some trouble selecting the tab here. Okay. We have an in-class question. Just a moment. When you have it on your on your mobile device, you send it. The text appears with sheet. Yeah, but if it's on there, it locks it into one corner. So, um, if you're on the phone, it should show like this. Okay. On your mobile device, it covers the width of the screen, but if you have it on the desktop, mm -hmm. it just goes in and put it in the box to the left hand side. Okay, is it that might be so in certain cases if you're trying to print feature sheets? So the question here is um no, this is when you send send those things as an email with the message at the top. Okay, so let's just try and recreate what our in class member is just talking about. Okay. So Yeah, in certain cases, what's going to happen is your browser is going to override your settings. What happens is the system here, if you're trying to say, for example, I'm trying to print a feature sheet. Let's just go here. It's just right there. It says message. Sorry, where? Message. If you fill in the message there at the bottom. Yeah, here. Subject, yeah. Type it in. On the mobile device, it's across the whole screen, but when you get it on my desktop, We'll have to look into this uh, after the session uh, and see what, what exactly is happening. Right now, I'm not able to understand why is this thing, this thing happening. Um, but just for all realtors, please make sure if you are going to email gateway links, they're going to be going in this fashion where you have the complete list as a table. You click, your, your client gets an option to click on it and they see it in an interactive fashion over here. But Say for example, I want to send this uh, as data sheets. 
And what data sheets does is it's going to def it's going to not give you an interactive option, but it's going to display all listings in the way you decide. So for example, I want to send it as a tour sheet client. So you can see that it's still going to email. We can still have interactive listings. You can click on it and you can see the same gateway again as we had over here, the same listing at the top, but it's going to be a feature sheet, like not a feature sheet, but a tour sheet in this case, which can be printed by your client or your peers, whoever is getting this email. So in certain cases, what will happen is when you try to print this guy, you know, um, the tour sheet appears at the top. It's just a little uh, distorted. It's not in the right size of the page that you have. These problems may happen, but they essentially happen only because you may have your browser settings overriding the default settings of this platform. So try this using a different browser. If you're facing issues with one browser, certainly, using another browser will resolve this issue. So for users who are on Mozilla, they may want to try Chrome. And we will look into that issue uh, right after this session, please. So going back, we have all our listings again over here. I'm just gonna click on this guy, deselect. Now we have zero listings selected. And let's just go through the different options we have under the actions button. The first option you see is print preview. When you click on print preview, what it's going to do is it's going to give me an option for feature sheets, but right now I don't have any listing selected. So let's just select three to four listings that we want to print feature sheets for the top four. Click on that guy, click print preview, click here. It's going to create it's going to show you a feature sheet all in A4 size, letter size, standard size paper. Click on print. And it's going to show you all the printing options that it has. Now this sheet is going to have your picture, your profile picture, your realtor details. Everything gets pulled in from the system. And here you have all the listing details as well. What you can do is either print this or save it as a PDF. Once you save it as a PDF, you can share it with your clients or, and they can have them printed at their end. So it really depends on how you want to use it. But the system definitely gives you an option for you to print these guys rather than just emailing gateway links. Because once you email gateway links, you're giving a lot of options. You're, you're letting your recipient view more listings, view these listings on a map. There are certain things that are happening which you may not want the realtor to be using the, your, your client to be using. Sorry. So here there are the three options. These are the sending options. So once you click on the actions button, the top three options are the sending options. The other, the, the second option over here is export. You can export these listings in specific formats. Let's see what happens over here. When you click on export, you get an Excel sheet. And that Excel sheet will hold exactly the same information that we have over here. Let's just, let's just not get there. Uh, we, we're falling short on time over here. So you can export it as well. Again, you can load and manage list. You can also save this list. What you would have noticed at the beginning of the session, let's just do this. You would have seen this load list option. Now this is where you load list. You may not want to perform the search again. You may just want to see the same list at a different time. So for that, let me just go back to the search that I had performed. So for that, if you want to save this as a list, if you want to see this list again and again, you have to click on actions, click on save as a list. Okay. So these hundred listings I want to save as a list. So now those hundred listings have been saved as a separate list. I click on search again and go back. Now I can click on load list. I will see my list over here. Click on that. 
and I have my hundred listings in place. So that's what load and manage list does to you, uh, helps you in this way, add to a save list. So say for example, I just wanted these two listings to be added to another saved list that I have. So if I click on that, I can go back and I can select the list that I want and I can add those two particular listings to that previously saved list. So that option is over here. You know what save as a list does load and manage list. This, this option is going to let you decide which list you want to see under load lists and which list do you want to remove. So by clicking on this cross over here, you can remove certain lists. Click on actions again, add to CMA. Now there's a chance that you might have created a CMA. Now CMA again is for a different day and we'll be looking at, looking at that in the next session that's coming up. But if you want to, I'm just imagining that everybody right now understands what a CMA does and it's going to add these two, these two sold listings to your sold CMA table. So if I click on add to CMA, what you can see here is the different CMAs that Murray has created previously. And I can add these two listings over here to any CMA that I have, that I have previously created. Then again, you can also add these two listings to showing time. Now this showing time card over here, let me, let me just show you what, what it does. It's going to add these listings, add to showing card. Okay, so there's some problem right now. So let's just not delve into this, but you can add listings to your showing card as well, to showing time. The same option is available over here. You can click on this guy and it will add this listing to your showing time. I'm not clicking on anything because then it's going to make changes to Murray's profile, which I don't want to do right now, but you can add, definitely add listings to showing time by clicking on these guys, or you can also select the listing by clicking on the checkbox and then going to add to showing time card. We've already seen what load and manage column layouts does give uh, get driving instruction directions is self-explanatory. So I'm not going to get into that as well. So just to, Debrief and just to tell you what this actions button does over here. First is first are the three options where you can send listings, you can export, you can load or manage lists. We also saw how you can fetch lists right from the search button over here. And you can load lists using this option. So that was about lists. You can also add to CMA, but for that you'll have to select the listing. So you can add to CMA. Um, you can add to showing time, you can load column layouts and get driving instructions. If you want to rearrange search results, you have to click on edit, click on manually rearrange search results. If you want to remove this particular listings, click on remove from search results. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it, you cannot add them to showing time right now because they're, they are sold listings. Again, I'm not a realtor, so I don't know the exact intricacies of how the system behaves. So please excuse me for that. But Definitely uh, right now we're looking at sole listings, so you cannot add them to showing time. And that's why the system was not doing that. Although the system does give you the opportunity to just add them to showing time by clicking over here. What you'll also notice is that we have another uh, column here. This is the auto prop column. This is the new column that has come onto exposure. Uh, auto prop gives you a whole range of information in relation to a particular listing. So if I want um, information on this listing, using auto load. All I have to do is just click on this guy over here. There is no need to sign in to auto load. The system is just going to take you from one platform and fetch you information from another platform without you actually having to select that particular listing or do anything with it. Just, it just gives you all information. So right now you can see this listing has been selected on auto prop. I can click on summary sheet and it's going to give me the summary of that particular listing. So when you have it in the spreadsheet there, or in that list, does that information also get sent to the public? Just a moment. I will on answer all questions um, towards the end of the session, so please hold on. Yes, please? Does the, when you go back to that sheet that you have. Okay. And then you got the auto prop uh, symbol there. Yeah. 
it will not feature auto prop. No. So the question here is, if we send these listings and if we have the auto prop column on the right hand side over here, is it going to send auto prop as well? No, it's not going to. Uh, this option is only available or this table, right, right, like right now you see it, is only going to be available to realtors. Yes, these training session, this training session will be uh, shared on the Kadria newsletter for the month. So it will come in a little later uh, in the second half of this month, but you will have it as a recorded session. So coming back, this, this, this um, icon over here takes you to Autoprop. And you can see Autoprop gives you a whole range of information. In, in, in a way you like it. Uh, if you click on full report, you can also save this report as a PDF. It gives you an option to also rearrange. Like the, we will have a separate session on Autoprop, but you can use this tool very easily by just clicking on this guy over here. So that's the table. We've seen how to rearrange search results. We've seen how um, we can rearrange columns as well. We've seen how we can filter results rearranging of search results. Another important thing is say, for example, sorry, I missed out on this one is uh, these three options. So say, for example, I want to copy these listings and paste it in a different search so that then I can send those listings to my client. So there can be a chance where if I select a certain range of criteria, it's going to give me a number of listings that I don't want. So I may want to just select these three listings and paste them in a different list. So let's just go back to search. And I may want to paste these listings that we've selected to say here. Okay, I may want to paste it over here. So I just click on edit, click on paste listings, and we have these three listings pasted over here. So that's the way you copy or paste listings. Um, what you'd notice right now is that we had to get rid of the previous search that we'd done. You don't really even need to do that. So right now I've just selected these three things. I'm going to remove them from search results because I don't want to play with Murray's list. Okay, so I removed them. But if you want to, if you want to have different instances of the search tab, so all you have to do is just keep clicking on this guy here and it's going to create another instance of exposure. So you can have one search going on right now over here, and you can have another search going on over here. So you cannot drag and drop listings on exposure because exposure is an online platform. Uh, interface was um, like, you know, stored on your computer. So that's why it allowed you different options where you can just simply drag and drop. Here, the system is available online, so there can't be any drag and drop option. In order to have that, we have the copy and paste listings option. So then if you have two tabs and the exposure Just copy and paste listings. Yes, that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So I can have these two listings. Just click on them, click edit, copy listings. I can go back to the previous search that I had and I can simply click on edit and paste listings. So those two listings will be pasted here. Now we are afraid that we cannot have a drag and drop option here. So that's why we have um, copy and paste listings. You can also view your clipboard. So if you wanted to check which listings have I actually copied, I chose your clipboard. I can also add it straight away, add it to results over here, but I don't want to do that right now because they're already in there. So click on action, sorry, not click on actions, click on edit, remove from search results. And that's the list that Murray had. So we go back to that. So that, that was the search tab. I am, um, I'm pretty sure that we've covered most of the topics here, but I'm also sure that there will be questions in, with regards to the different criteria that are there. There might be a chance that, uh, the system may have um, something, a particular function in one corner that's not working. So what I request each one of you is, please kindly just try this out by yourself. Try this at your end, see if this thing works, 
how do you like it on a, on a mobile platform? Um, if you like it on a, a tablet or not, how is the system behaving? Whether you're able to search for listings just using your phone, because the system really is designed to work on your phone. And this is how it's going to look. Okay, just hang on, sorry. This is how it's going to look on your phone. So you have everything uh, like, you know, in a sequence. Now, th now this is where arranging of your criteria boxes comes into play. If you're using exposure on your phone, there's a chance you may not want area to be here. You may just want price to be at the top because you're looking at it on your phone, right? So you may want that to happen. So what do you do? You just go to actions, go to add or remove reorder search boxes, and you can put your price range at the top because you're using, on, you're using it on a different device. So exposure allows you the opportunity to use this platform for your benefit the way you like it. Oh yeah, the, the one problem that we have right now is if you try to save exposure as a bookmark, uh, it's going to like the next time you get onto the platform, uh, it takes you to interface express and then you have to click on exposure on the right hand side at the top to go into exposure. And the, and the reason for that is um, the underlying platform for exposure is essentially interface express. Interface express is like the kernel. It's like the core of this platform. Exposure was developed so that it is adaptive and is responsive to the different devices that are there in the market in today's times. You're not only going to use this platform for uh, on your desktop, you can use it on different devices. And that's why exposure was created so that then you have the ability to just use any device and the system will be responsive with respect to that, that device. So if you're having to go through interface express at this point, I would request you guys to please do that. Um, we have that into account. We have recorded that and we'll try to fix that as well, but it might take some time. Now I'm just going to go to the questions that our members have asked. Thank you for being patient with me in this case. Um, let's go to the first question here. Question says, does the list update if you have saved home from 200 to 300? Yes. Uh, if I'm getting this question right, I'm guessing by 200 to 300, you mean the price range. So if you edit your price range, the system is going to update the list from time to time in real time. But that is only going to happen at this stage. It is only going to happen at this stage. So if I select Kamloops, Aberdeen, you will notice that the, the list is changing by itself at this point. So if I put a current price from 200 to 300, it has changed my active listings in real time to just six. So I know how many listings I have or how many listings are going to show finally in the list if I have these search criteria selected. No, the save list will not update. Um, the save list is a list which you saved for that time. And that is why you also have to select all the search for all the check boxes over here. You will have to, if you, in order to save a list, you'll have to select all the check boxes and only then you can save a list. So Eileen, I hope I've been able to explain that in order to save a list, you'll have to have all your check boxes selected and only then you can save that list. So if, uh, a new listing comes up or if a listing gets taken off or whatever gets sold or is put under conditional, all of those things will reflect in the system, but the list will not change. So if tomorrow there's a new listing that comes up, that listing will not be added to your list. But if that listing has been changed from say active to sold, that status will change. Okay. Okay, so yes, the save list will update depending on the status of the listing, but just the listing, like the, like a hundred listings will not change to 101. That's what I meant, meant to say. So um, going to the next question. Thank you. Thank you, Elaine. Why does the search bar at top show not secure site? Oh, uh, so it says not secure because 
um, this website has not been secured. Like it is not available for the common people. The security that is provided to the system is provided by the NAF login that we have. Once you are in the system, this system is absolutely secure. So if anybody sees um, that, okay, this, this is saying right now as not secure, that does not mean it is not, not secure because you already have entered the system using real to link. So whether it says not secure or secure, it is not going to make any difference because you've already um, gone past the, the, the security criteria that was there. And there's just that there is no SSL um, security that is needed at this layer. Um, the security has been taken care of by NAF. Uh, have I been able to answer this question? Okay, if we get a response, we will go back to the same, that question, but right now. Okay, we have a suggestion coming from Scott, which says all grid columns should be labeled. And I completely agree with that, but it's just that we've had certain visual columns. Now, these are visual columns. Let me just go back to add or remove columns here. These are view columns. Now that's why these columns don't have any name on top of it. And that is why, and that's the reason because these are view columns. They are, you're just supposed to understand what the, what those columns do. So in this case, if I click on this guy over here, it's not going to click a picture, but it's going to show me some pictures with respect to that listing and right on top. So these are view columns. You can, you can change that. You can change them. You can get rid of them. But right now we don't have any column name and I'm just giving you the reason why we don't have, we don't have a name on top of that. It will be a good to have thing. I absolutely agree. And I will take that as a recommendation. I don't have my book over here, but I will definitely take, take, take that down as a recommendation and put them, put it in the list. Going to the next question. Um, Greg, it will not show, um, okay. I have actually not tested that whether it shows or not, but if it is not secure at this point, I'm guessing that it is not going to show secure at the client's end, but let's just, let's just see what happens if we, oh, this is something that I'm trying because yeah, we got to try So email gateway link. Let's see what happens when we click on this guy. Yeah, it is still showing not secure. Uh, but the point is, I'm, what I'm getting from this thing is like you, you would like your, your gateway links to be showing the, the SSL layer that there's security and um, there are no, there won't be any infringement into the recipient's privacy or anything of that sort. And if that is a concern, then definitely it needs to show that it's secure. But the point is that the system is performing a secure, like the security layer is at the stage of the NAF logins. Once you get into the system, you are secure. And when you send this link, you, you have to understand this, that when you send this link, there is no other person and there is no option for anyone to send this link to any client. So if your client is getting this link, it is coming from a secure person. It is coming from a realtor. It is, um, they can, they need to absolutely trust this, this link that is being sent out. If they are not trusting it, uh, you will have to tell them that, um, you know, we, it's all secure because they don't have any, any option or we are not requesting for any, uh, we're not putting in any cookies. We are not telling them to uh, give us their email ID or, or any information from the recipient end. So we're not fetching anything. We're not dropping any cookies. So the client or whoever is receiving this has nothing to worry about essentially. So, and if they are getting this particular link, it is coming from a secure place because there's no other option. There's no other way anybody can come to this stage except for a realtor and send this link to a client. So absolutely. It is about perception. And if, if it says secure, 
um, it it definitely casts a different um, impression in in the minds of the real uh, of the, of the client. I completely second that thought and I agree to it. Uh, it will be a good thing to have. But if for now, I'm just telling you at this point, at this stage, if you feel that you you don't have any reason or you you cannot tell your client as to why this thing is not secure, I'm giving you more information on that and how you can like you know turn this into your favor. I'm just letting you know on that. So. Um, have I been able to answer that question? Or uh, if, if you're not satisfied, you can definitely write to me. I'm going to be sending my email ID here. Please send us your concerns. Uh, if there's any question, if there's any feedback, send them to me on anthurang at career.com and we'll have that looked into. So, uh, Greg and Scott, I completely understand what you guys are trying to say, uh, but if you have any recommendation, <laughs> yeah, it's, it does say, just trust me. But then the thing is, eventually the, the, the client has to trust the realtor. If the client trusts the, trusts the realtor, they will trust any link and every link that they get. So that's where you have to build the trust. And I'm, I'm, and I'm not a realtor. I don't know what the real world scenario is. So I completely understand what you're trying to say. And it will be definitely good to have an SSL layer over here. But if you have to explain as to why this is not, and that is because there's nobody, no one who can send this link like this coming from your account to another person in this world. There's no option. There's no way. NAF logins are very secure for someone to send this listing just by themselves for, for, uh, for, a, for an untrustworthy person. It is just not possible. So um, let's just move to the next question. Okay, I think that was all. That was all. We have one Q and A. Just hang on. What's include in my public listing portal is checked off. Okay. So, include my public listing portal is Murray has his own listings that are public. When he's trying to search and send a set of listings to a client. He may want the option that where he would want to show his active public listings to that client. So when you get onto this platform over here and uh, you click on more listings, this is also going to include Murray's listings in there. So, oh, sorry, this is just more listings. Hang on. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm just trying to solve this problem in this, this confusion here. This basically is going to give you an option. Now, right, right now it's just not opening anything. I don't know what is happening in the background, but let me just try that again. Seems like the system is just lagging. Okay, agent info. So it's not opening right now, but what it does is let me let me show you a listing page. Sorry about this. It's, it's sometimes it's just the system is not the way you like it. So let me just show you how this thing really works. We had a hundred listings over there. So maybe because of that, there's some problem. So if I click on this guy,
Okay, it's opening an interface. Yeah, right there. So here we have Murray's profile and it should be giving an option where we can view Murray's listings. But I'm not sure where that is right now. So I will have to come back to you. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what this public thing is, but it, it basically stands for this particular list that we are sending. It will also include Murray's like they will be able to view Murray's public listings. If you have this check checkbox selected, whatever listings are going from this particular point on to your client or your peers or whoever the recipient is, they will, they will also be able to see, Murray's public listings. Um, is that clear? Now, I don't know the exact spot where you can find that right now, but that's what the system is meant to do. But if you have this particular thing selected, is that all right? And if anybody has any questions, if I haven't been able to answer anything, I request you guys to please write to us and we will try and resolve that issue. Um, and that's it for today. I hope I've been able to convey um, all the important points that are under the search tab. And um, yeah, if you have any feedback with regards to this session, please let me know. Uh, we'll be having another session next Wednesday and not Tuesday because we've had many people uh, tell us that Tuesday is a little inconvenient for them because we have tours. So Wednesdays for sure. Um, we'll see you next Wednesday. If you want to join with us, we will have uh, the registration link sent out. So thank you for today and have a great day ahead.